Hey guys, I'm going to do a video today, and this is going to be number four in the top 10 list, looking at more evidence that we are in Satan's little season. And again, this is part of a larger study on my channel, answering the questions, are we indeed in Satan's little season, and has the millennial kingdom of Christ already occurred? And this probably will be the longest video of the top 10 list, uh, and this is basically a gateway of realization for a lot of people that just how much spiritual deception is in this world and if they can lie and get away with a lie this big what else are they lying about uh so let's get right to it number four the spinning ball we don't live on this and this is something that i don't even think about it anymore um kind of realized this a decade ago or so kept quiet about it and then started my youtube channel and then made several videos when I was looking at this and other things within the realm of scientism and all the false prophets like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye the science guy etc etc uh, and actually made a playlist called the false prophets of scientism on my YouTube channel and this goes way back um, seven eight years ago but and I'll link, I was, I was going to put a few videos and talk about them within this, but the presentation will be way too long. So we're just going to look at slides. I'm going to link a few of these and I'll mention them as we go through this. Uh, but this, again, is the gateway to the realization of just how much spiritual wickedness there is in this time and how much deception we're in. And this is one of the big reasons I believe we are in Satan's little season. And this deception has been going on for hundreds of years. And we'll talk about that and the transition into Satan's little season and how the blue marble, the globe earth, the spinning ball lie has been passed off as truth to generation after generation. Like you can see here, this is our children today. This was us a generation ago. This was our parents two generations ago and their parents three generations ago and so on and so forth. There's a globe in every classroom throughout the world and everybody gets indoctrinated on this spinning ball before they can truly think for themselves that's indoctrination why would they and we've talked ad nauseum about who the they is and now we know why we are being deceived because we're in that era of deception it's to hide our past the dark ages that they tell you the history books say was really the era of the middle kingdom of Christ and our future if we are indeed in Satan's little season, we're further down the prophetic timeline in the Bible than most Christians realize. So what's next? You know, they know this. They know what's happened in the past. The they, the Luciferians, the ones that were waiting on Lucifer, Satan, to be released from the bottomless pit, uh, as it was prophesied. They knew the time back then. They knew when it was going to happen. And everything was set up for this transition that we've been experiencing. And now we are well into Satan's little season. So why the spinning ball lie? Well, one, to hide us from biblical cosmology and our past. That there was indeed a millennial kingdom. And it possibly could be in the center of our realm. The North Pole or the central part of the stationary plane that we live on with the saints ruling and reigning after the first resurrection with angelic beings emanating from the center of our realm throughout the world establishing and furthering the good news of Jesus Christ and at the same time building incredible angelic architecture that we've gone over and over in these videos. Beautiful situation, 
the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. I think Psalms 48 is speaking of the millennial kingdom and where it was. This was prophesied back then during the writing of Psalm 48 through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost of what was to come after the destruction of Jerusalem and fall of Rome. Where is it now? Well, the camp of the saints could be above us. It could be veiled. It could be hidden in the clouds. Just as in Moses' day, the camp of the saints was hidden by a cloud by day and fire by night from the Egyptians prior to them going across the Red Sea. Maybe this city is being veiled right now in the same likewise manner before heavenly Jerusalem descends and we have a new heavens and new earth, the promise of God, a new promised land in our future. But it could be below us. And we know that in Revelation 12, Satan comes with a flood, and that could be figuratively speaking of a flood of angels that comes with him. And I think we are infiltrated during this Satan's little season with angelic beings. Fallen angels, I think, are part of the ruling and reigning of this era that we live in. And that, again, I believe is one of the many reasons why mankind is so deceived, as prophesied in Revelation 20. But the flood could also be a result of catastrophic earthquakes and soil liquefaction and genuine raising of the tides and um, sea levels resulting from a monumentous event such as the bottomless pit releasing a figure such as Satan. Another reason that they want you to believe in the spinning ball lie is because we're only one of a quadrillion planets out there in an ever-expanding universe and that there could be life on other planets. And one day there could be an alien invasion. If we understood biblical cosmology and we mean in the world, then they couldn't have this law of an alien invasion. A beings from outer space from another planet coming down to invade Earth and to take it over. As we are being prepped over the last several decades through Hollywood movies, TV shows, speaking of space and aliens and alien invasions such as Independence Day with this great mothership coming down and we must rally and defend ourselves for the good of humanity to save Earth from the invading aliens above. The spinning ball lie makes many, many people believe something like this could happen in our day and age. So, the next big thing to occur if we are indeed in Satan's little season, according to Revelation 20, is the camp of the saints being surrounded by the armies of the nations who are deceived during Satan's little season before fire comes down from heaven by God to destroy them all. How could the world be so deceived into fighting against heavenly Jerusalem with Jesus and the camp of the saints descending, bringing about righteousness and judgment, a new heavens and new earth. Well, simple. They get you to believe in stuff like this because of the spinning ball lie. Another reason that they could be lying to us about 
the globe Earth is because they may know that outer space actually doesn't go up, but it goes outward, further south, past the ice wall that we know now today as Antarctica, the South Pole. The North Pole centrally, everything from it is south. But what if there were further land beyond the ice wall? And this was outer space. So ultimately it comes down to who do we trust? Do we trust man? Do we trust NASA and their composite images? Their fake moon landings? Or do we trust the Bible? Do we trust biblical cosmology? Ever wonder why a rainbow is shaped like a dome? Well, here's your answer. And I'm going to put several different videos discussing this from a biblical standpoint, looking at verses as well as a couple of examples. Here, the firmament, many verses. This obviously is just a few of many talking about the earth, that it should not be moved. We live on a stationary plane. The stars of heaven fell into the earth. We know that the sun, moon, and stars are within the firmament, within a circuit above us, with us being below on a stationary plane, the face of the earth. And we can see other verses here. And in Genesis chapter 1, verses 4, 14 to 19, we see that God made two great lights, the sun and the moon, the greater light and lesser light, and he made the stars also. This was on day four, and you can read that. So this is the greater light within the firmament. This is the lesser light within the firmament. Ecclesiastes 12.2, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds returned after the rain. So, light was created on day one. The sun wasn't created and the moon and stars until day four. So, the light that we see at dawn before the sun rises and the light that we see at dusk before the sun sets is not from the sun. It's from the light of the day, the ambient light that was made on day one. We see several examples in the Old Testament of biblical cosmology and of this fact. When Joshua, and I'll link a video, a two minute video that I made seven years ago to the month in May of 2017 with a few others that I made about that same time, about the day the sun and moon stood still when Joshua asked the Lord to allow the sun and the moon to stay until the battle was completed. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed. The earth didn't stop spinning, which would cause at a thousand miles an hour to suddenly stop catastrophic events, but God simply pause the sun and moon within the firmament, within its circuit. Here's the moon during the daytime. It's the lesser light. We can't land on light. This is not terra firma. The moon is not anything that we can land upon. The moon landings were a huge hoax and part of the deception during Satan's little season. Again, Genesis 1.16, he made the stars also. And I'll link another video of what I think stars are. We see stars oftentimes linked with spiritual beings, the host of heaven, as it's described many times. And the stars go in circuit just as the sun and moon does within the firmament. You can see here the north star Polaris above the central part of our realm stays stationary and the remaining stars the millions if not billions in circuit around it 
They are moving over a stationary plane. We are not moving. We are not spinning. They are in circuit above us. And again, I think when Ezekiel was describing the spiritual beings, the living creatures with a wheel within a wheel, that he was actually describing a star. He was seeing a face-to-face -face encounter with a star. How big are stars? NASA, the famous astronomers of the world today, will tell you they are so much bigger than the Earth. These giant balls of gas that emanate light from billions and billions of miles away in this ever-expanding universe. But we know that stars fall from heaven and come to the Earth. This cannot come to here without this being completely wiped out. So who's telling the truth? The Bible, God's Word, or NASA? The planets lie. The wandering stars deception. The only time planets is mentioned in the Bible is 2 Kings 23.5. And it's mentioned with negative connotation. It states, and he put down the idolatrous priests, let's talk about King Josiah, whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun and the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven. This is pagan worship of planets here. And here's what we're taught in every classroom in the world that planets going from Mercury to Pluto go around the Sun and this is our solar system the system of the Sun the system of Apollo the God of light is Apollo or Helios the Sun God well I think they're one in the same and you can see here, Helios, Apollyon, and Alexander the Great are the same person. And you can see bus of Alexander the Great, Helios, and Apollo are Apollyon. And they're the same as that person. This is the same as that person that we see described in paintings of Lucifer. And this looks exactly like what we see in New York's harbor, the Statue of Liberty. And there's something about Helios, Apollo, Alexander the Great. We see the god Mithras, the Persians. We see the Caesars paying homage to Apollo. That there is a connection between the beast system and Apollo. I think Helios actually may have been Apollo looking forward to the sun god and that Apollo was a creation by Satan even. We know the serpent seed and in Genesis 3.15 it shall bruise thy head and thy shall bruise his heel. Well what if Apollyon was a literal son of Satan. And what if he possessed men like Alexander the Great, almost like a symbiotic relationship, if you will, to form the king of the beast system, Alexander the Great being the third beast, and the fourth beast being the ruler over Rome before the fall of Rome. We know that Rome invaded the Israelites and destroyed Jerusalem prior to the fall of Rome. And is it possible that the prophecy in Genesis 3.15, it shall bruise thy head and thy shall bruise his heel, with heel referring to Jacob, and Israel and 
Caesar, the beast of the fourth beast system prior to the fall of Rome, invading and destroying Jerusalem and the children of Israel through Apollyon, the king over the bottomless pit who was released at that time. And now, if so, then he is in the lake of fire with the false prophet. And all the worship that we see today of Apollo is in homage of their fallen prince. But now that Satan's rele releasing Satan's little season, dad is here in this time of deception. And every Luciferian pays homage to possibly his literal son. And that may be why we see the Statue of Liberty all over the world today. It is the world's cities paying homage to their fallen king. So how do planets get their names? Well, let's ask a famous NASA scientist. Again, it's all based on Roman mythology, Greek mythology. Began with Nicholas, Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler, Isaac Newton. Here you can see a Freemason's compass and square. And here you can see the relationship of our current Freemasons that we have throughout NASA. You can see Buzz Aldrin's ring. He was a Freemason. Neil Armstrong's father was a Freemason. So he had connections, the first person to walk on the moon. But Copernicus was born in 1473 to 1543, if we believe the history books and that our chronology has not been changed. But I do believe that all these guys on the left lived during the millennial kingdom of Christ. They were outside in the outer darkness and did not experience it because of unbelief. But they were basically Freemasons of their times before the official Freemasonry club began in the early 18th century. Copernicus, for instance, has several Freemason lodges named after him. And Galileo, who was born 1564 and died in 1642, in the mid-18th century, you can see him here. They all have the, the squares. They all have the, or you can see Copernicus with his globe model. But an interesting thing happened to the body, the skeleton of Galileo in the mid 18th century. Freemasons actually dug his skeleton up and extracted three of his digits, a molar and a vertebra, before reburying his skeleton. And this was basically a Masonic ritual equivalent of bestowing secular sainthood on Galileo. Kepler, you see in the bottom left, 1571 to 1630, as our history books will tell us, was influenced by Pythagorean mysticism and Sir Isaac Newton from 1643 to 1727. He was president of the Royal Society, which was basically a pre-Freemason club for scientists as scientism and this propagation of the false narrative of the globe began at the end of the millennial kingdom of Christ and the beginning of Saint's little season. They knew exactly how much time was left and when Satan would be released. And Newton also had a lot of, or has a lot of Freemason lodges named after him. And you can see the post-Newtonian astronomy during Satan's little season, where several important discoveries were made. And additional planets were even named that were discovered by these Luciferians. Back in the 
time of the beast system in Greek and Roman times, where Greek and Roman mythology came about with the worshiping of the sun, moon, stars, and planets, which they are trying to get our children to continue to worship today, and us included. They were named after the Roman gods back then. But during Satan's little season, we have Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto to add to our gods that are wandering stars above us. Small g gods. And did you know that the Earth is the only planet not named after a god? So they're trying to tell you here that Roman mythology and paganism influences this study of astronomy, but they continue to show a fake spinning ball globe Earth and call it a planet. It's not a planet, it's a plane. But they want you to believe this lie so much because it hides the past, it hides the current era that we're in of deception, if you believe it, and it possibly is going to, for our generation, our kids, to deceive those of what's to come. Let's get to Antarctica, the Antarctic Circle, the South Pole at the bottom of the spinning globe. Why do you think it's called the Antarctic Circle? <laughs> because its circles are known round. You can see here an old map from, quote, medieval times. During the time of the Millennial Kingdom of Christ, and you see the North Pole here with land. You see current continents. And then you see land here. This is now ice. But before, during the Millennial Kingdom, it could have been a habitable climate. And there's evidence of a past civilization living in parts of Antarctica. But you can't get here now. You can go on guided tours and they'll allow you to see what they want you to see, but you can't go and explore Antarctica. The 360 degree ice wall says here Antarctica is not a continent, shows the United Nations flag, shows that there's no images of Antarctica from space. Anything that you see, again, is a composite image. And it describes the no-fly, no-sail zone that has been in force since 1959 with the Antarctic Treaty says here, Antarctica, the highest landmass on Earth with an average ele elevation of 7,545 feet above sea level is the 360 degree perimeter of our known world and the container of our oceans. The Antarctic Treaty was signed in 1959 in which today 52 of the world's most powerful nations participate to keep all non-authorized personnel away. Well, one person who was authorized in the mid-20th century to explore Antarctica, as we discussed on the last video, is Admiral Richard Byrd. And he did several explorations of the South Pole of Antarctica. The last one that he did shortly thereafter, he died at the age of 68, apparently in a sleep of a heart attack. And then the next year, the Antarctic Treaty was agreed upon by every nation in the world. But before he died, he described his findings and said there's a landmass bigger than America beyond the South Pole that's never been explored. What did he know about our outer space? The space outside 
this area here. What are they trying to hide? And is this another reason that during Satan's little season, the spinning ball lie has been knocked over our heads for generation after generation? Well, getting to the 50s, or continuing in the 50s, we have Walt Disney and Werner von Braun. Walt Disney, 33, 33rd degree Freemason, was heavily, heavily involved in space exploration. You can see him here with Nazi turned NASA scientist Werner von Braun. Werner von Braun. Together, it says, best friends Walt Disney and Nazi scientist Werner von Braun, the founder of NASA, created their enterprises to deceive the masses. Disney deceives and brainwashes children with cartoons, while NASA deceives and brainwashes adults with cartoons. <laughs> and NASA truly is Santa Claus for adults. But getting back to Walt Disney, in a movie it states in the animated film Cinderella, the cat's name is Lucifer. But Walt Disney was a 33rd degree Freemason. He was a high level Luciferian. You can see him here. Um, and his magic kingdom has a lot of Masonic references. They even have in Disneyland a Masonic club where one of the restaurants is named 33. And you can see here, Mars and beyond, man in space, man in the moon, this is all Disney propaganda before the fake moon landing, after NASA was established in 1958. You can see here, Walt Disney, putting out several books to kids, discussing man in space. Satellites were described before they existed. Uh, science fiction writers also did the same. Man in space, a science feature from Tomorrowland showing spacewalks. And Walt Disney's Mars and Beyond, a science feature from Tomorrowland. And besides the Magic Kingdom, we now have Universal with the spinning globe. And we can see the evolution of the Universal Motion Picture logo from its early days in the early 20th century with the plain circulant to the current version today. This is all part of the propaganda to further the lie of the spinning ball. And these are all wizards. You can see here an obituary describing um, the passing of Walt Disney, the wizard of fantasy. And again, these are Luciferian Freemason wizards. They're warlocks and wizards. They're part of the occult. During the same time in the 40s and 50s, when all of this exploration was going on and all of this space propaganda was beginning, we had a lot of other developments. We had the United Nations, which was established in 1945. You can see here with the flat earth map and the laurel leaves around it, which represent Apollo. You can see the same thing with the World Health Organization, which was established in 1948 with the serpent. In 1948, as we discussed in a previous video, the state of Israel is born. But also, just a few years later, later, July 29, 1958, NASA was created. You know, the Fort Tongue Luciferians that deceive the nations now during Satan's little season. Yeah, them. That NASA. 
Why does NASA have so many Freemasons and other magical or mystical orders and members and initiates? Well, it's because it's established by Luciferians to deceive the nations during Satan's little season. You can see here one of the founders of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Jack Parsons, being a key founder of that technology that now is owned by NASA. And Jack Parsons has a very, very interesting past. He was actually mentored by Aleister Crowley and was heavily, heavily involved in the occult. And actually, his wife ran off with L. Ron Hubbard, who invented Scientology. And the stories involved around his life would make a prostitute blush. But now getting back to Warner Von Braun from Nazi to NASA scientists. What is NASA's secret? What do they know? And what are they trying to hide? You can see here Warner Von Braun in his office in Huntsville, Alabama which is not too far from where I live in Birmingham. But besides being a Nazi scientist and then a NASA scientist who was heavily involved in space and rocket technology with NASA, he wrote in 1948 Project Mars, a technical tale by Werner von Braun. And in this fictional book, he describes the leader of Mars and his name, Elon. And you can see the cover of the book here. And then, now, what a coincidence. We have Elon Musk in our generation, who made a rocket that looks just like this one in 2019, and is the founder of, NAS of Tesla and SpaceX. But Warner Von Braun, who was born in 1912, passed away in 1977. And on his tombstone, he has Psalms 19.1. And you can see here, next to a patch of Apollo 13, with a logo of the sun god Apollo, as we see here in an ancient carving. But Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. I think that is one of NASA's secrets that Werner von Braun was trying to tell us from the grave. Part of this 20th century exploration to the outer realms of our stationary plane and the upper echelon of our firmament is basically to hide our creator, to establish a narrative to deceive the nations. You can see here in 1946, Operation High Jump occurred where they discovered the ice wall that surrounded our realm. Then, about a decade later, Operation Deep Freeze, where this slide purports that the firmament was officially discovered, or conclusively discovered. Then, three years later, NASA was founded. The Van Allen belts are interesting. Uh, description by NASA. Are they describing another name for the firmament? 
Then the next year, the Antarctic Treaty, which guards the outer realm and possibly other lands beyond outer space going south, not into the ever expanding universe and possibly guarding detection, confirmation of our firmament. Operation Fishbowl, that's an interesting operational name in 1962 where they started shooting rockets above and just watched them explode. Were they testing the firmament? And then in 1969, the Apollo missions, Apollo 11, began man walking on the moon. The hopes to hide the firmament. You can see here, a poster of Apollo 11, first manned mission to the moon, launch day, July 16th, 1969. You notice they always launch these from coastlines. Why is that? Here's Apollo, Lucifer, Apollyon, Helios. This is their God. One giant leap for mankind. You can see the fake Earth in the background of the Apollo 11 slide. And there again, another representation. This is the Statue of Liberty. This is Apollo. This, I think, is the beast that destroyed Jerusalem. It bruised the heel, Jacob, before his head was crushed at the fall of Rome. And now, this entity is in the lake of fire, in my opinion. You can see all the Apollo emissions. Again, they're trying to hide God. They're trying to hide the past. They're trying to hide what season we're in now. They're trying to hide that we can't go into an ever-expanding universe because they want you to believe in life on other planets they want you to believe in aliens because they know during this era at some point in time there's going to be something that they're going to have to deceive mankind about and it's going to be the camp of the saints being revealed from above again more patches of apollo and you can see here as we've talked about before this is the same entity Lucifer, Apollyon, Mithras, Statue of Liberty right here. This is paying homage to the beast. And I think maybe even the son of Satan. But let's talk just briefly about the moon landings. I was thinking about putting this as a separate deception, but this is all obviously interlinked. So this video will just go a little bit longer. Um, but you can see here. Uh, the Freemason, Buzz Aldrin, you can see him here, Luciferian symbols with his Apollo jacket. He knows the truth, but he's not going to tell you flat out. He can't. He's taken a vow. He can't do it. None of these Luciferians can. But they want you to believe that this literally happened that the lesser light was landed upon within our firmament by a contraption that looks like this. This is a freaking joke. And this, this looks so staged. This is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Look at the moon rover. Ha Just think about this. This all got to the moon, they want you to think, in a rocket ship, then this moon buggy got out some way of this contraption with three people also inside it. And now these three people get into this little thing that looks like it's made out of tinfoil and blast off to get back to Earth. It's absolutely ridiculous and they say that they did all this with technology that was less than you can find in your 
iPhone today. If you tell a big enough lie, I guess people will believe it in Satan's little season. But the truth behind the moon landing is again, you can't land on a light <laughs> within the firmament. As simple as that. Again, NASA going sideways to get into space since 1958. Lift off and splash down. And if you see any type of rocket launch, you will see this trajectory over and over and over again. The Bermuda Triangle, a.k.a. space. And I remember reading books when I was little about the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. What went on? Well, basically, this is where all the rocket crap landed into the ocean. And if you find it and tell anybody, you're probably going to be killed. And I think that's what went down back during this time. The Bermuda Triangle isn't some region of mythical disappearances. It's NASA's hidden graveyard when they fake space launches. They don't want you stumbling upon the sunken shuttle charade. I, I'm so tongue-tied, I can't speak. There's no sunken shuttle charade. All right, that's a good tongue twister. But the moon landing conspiracy. And that's what it is. It's a conspiracy. It's a literal conspiracy that Luciferians conspired to deceive the nations back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, into today. Just like the words of Anthony Kiedis of Red Hot Chili Peppers on the song California Cation, space may be the final frontier, but it was made in a Hollywood basement. Truer words could not had been stated by young Anthony Kiedis at the time because it was staged. It's completely staged. This is Hollywood theater. And if NASA has a multi-billion dollar budget, do you not think they can stage stuff like this? Do you not think their budget, which is a lot more than any blockbuster Hollywood movie, that they can fake stuff? So we go from the 70s to the 80s with the space shuttle missions. And the famous Challenger, what went wrong there? You know, I remember watching this live. And the Challenger went up and then it exploded. What happened? Was there a malfunction? Or was NASA simply challenging the firmament and it hit it? And couldn't go any further and exploded. You be the judge. But there are reports that there wasn't even anybody on the Challenger at that time. And if there was, then these Luciferians are even more evil than I think. But you can see here, from there... We have the International Space Station just floating around, this little piece of crap floating in orbit, revolving around the Earth. Something described in the 50s by, you guessed it, Walt Disney. An authentic scale model of the original Walt Disney Space Station. All plastic, easy to assemble. <laughs> and you can see these clowns over and over and over again with their levitational tricks, their CGI, their cables, all of the budget that NASA puts in and they can't even make the inside of the space station look presentable. You can see here Oh, it's the Super Bowl between the Falcons and Patriots. So let's fly a rocket ship up to the people that's been in the space station for months and months so that they can wear their favorite player's jersey for the Super Bowl. 
when basically they walked right outside this thing and got the jersey off a rack at a local mall. These are clowns. These are absolute Luciferian clowns. Look at them. They're superheroes to children all over the world. But basically, they're tricksters. They're deceivers. They're part of the system of the sun. The solar system. Easy magic tricks to levitate. Let's do this spacewalk. And these photos are so bad. This is like a literal photo that they say it was taken in space. This is ridiculous. I can't believe they tried to deceive us with such crap. But here's the false prophets of scientism, the Neil deGrasse Tysons, who want to get you to believe all this and tell you through the pride of the flesh, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. So believe me, don't believe the Bible. Believe in the Big Bang Theory, kids. And Stephen Hawking here, you know, the smartest scientist in the world, famous astrophysicist, who was given two years to live in 1963 with ALS, but lived for five generations after that or more and revolutionizes physics for the next half century. You can see him here in his older age. He gets younger by the year, it seems like. And they're inside a zero G gravity spinning this guy around. I mean, these Luciferians right here are cruel. They are cruel. He has no idea what's going on right here. And I guarantee you, he wasn't spitting out the computer animated voice about the mysteries of the universe either. This is what they do. This is how these Luciferians and Satan's little season, this is what they do. They do something so outlandish that you believe it. And then if you talk about it, or if you call them out on it, then you're viewed as somebody that's insensitive. How could you be so insensitive of Stephen Hawking? Well, I'm just telling you the truth. And this guy isn't. Bill Nye, the science guy. You know, the guy that Disney hired to indoctrinate kids on the spinning ball eye and the Big Bang Theory and evolution and dinosaurs and everything else that we've been going through in this series. And the teachers that get this crap into the classrooms because they've been taught it when they were kids and have gotten indoctrinated in it. And now we tell our kids the same thing. It's all a lie. It's all a big G lie. <laughs> the big G of the Luciferians, the compass and square, trying to get you to believe that we live on a spinning ball and there's nothing but ice in the Arctic at the North Pole. They don't want you to know what's really there. The North Pole, is it the true north or home of Santa Claus? And you can see here a rendition of the Mercator map. How compasses point to the north. Compasses point, point to the central aspect of our realm. It's not pointing around a ball to an upper part of a spinning ball. This is how a compass works. On a globe, this doesn't make sense, but on a flat earth, a stationary plane, you hold the compass flat and it points to the north. Anything opposite of that is south. And this is how you navigate around our realm.
just like that. Up is up, down is down. But they want you to believe as above, so below. In the magnetic fields, they will tell you there are polar regions, the North Pole and the South Pole with opposite attractions. And that's the way that we can tell that the Earth is tilted and we have all these different forces and blah, blah, blah. But this is, I believe, truly how the mag magnetism of our realm works. It even works where two Taurus, um, you know, these are Taurus fields, energy fields, and within them, there's always a flat plane. And, you know, basically a dielectric inertia plane. And it's flat between the Taurus field. I think this is what we have in our realm. Something like this. Would this be in our realm? This being true above with the north right here in the central part and this being below. This can explain how the firmament works. This can explain how the depths below the earth, including the bottomless pit, work. But if we have something in our past that was at the north. Now Satan is trying to sit on that congregation on the sides of it. Isaiah 14, 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. This is the north. This is the sides of the north. The sides of the north. This is where I think the Millennial Kingdom overpass was and where it emanated into the lands of our world to spread the gospel and begin all these angelic architecture buildings that we see many still standing today. How free energy can work with this. Why they're trying to hide this. Because they want to be part of this. And they're working really hard to deceive the nations. But finally, I want to look at this Luciferian, 33rd degree Mason, Walt Disney, and his Epcot that we know today. Epcot stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Did he know something about the North? And possibly a kingdom there. And is he wanting to establish a community of tomorrow there after the camp of the saints in this area is encompassed by the armies of the nations who are deceived by Satan so that they can establish their selves in the sides of the north. And I'm sure many of you have been to Epcot at Disney World, the story of Walt Disney's futuristic city. You can see here a central city with almost like a spoke and wheel design. What happened to Epcot? You can see here. Well, I think they're trying to literally create Epcot. <laughs> and the spinning globe lie is deceiving the nations, so they think they have a chance. You can see this logo here. Looks a lot like the 
what I feel is our true magnetic energy source. And we see this a lot even in our bodies, you know, the heart, for instance, this type of magnetic, uh, electromagnetic field. You can see here the geodesic, geodesic sphere of Epcot and their mascot, Figment. Figment of the imagination. And Epcot is actually, it's, uh, it's, this is its logo, Figment. Its slogan, that's what I'm trying to say, is the magic of possibility. So are they possibly trying to establish themselves in the sides of the north and encircle the compass, encompass the camp of the saints when that day occurs? And trying to get the world to go along with their Luciferian plans. But I think they know that it's not a spinning ball sphere, but they understand geodesic dome frequencies. And finally, when New Jerusalem does come to the earth, it's not going to come like this. Jesus is going to be within New Jerusalem, and the new heavens and new earth will be established. But it's not going to come and land on a spinning ball. Like this ask. You know, and many Christians have probably asked this, actually, who believe in this lie. How can New Jerusalem land on a globe? This could actually hurt someone's faith that the Bible's true, the book of Revelation is true. Well, how can a square or a pyramidal city with that diameter that's described in the Bible land on a curved surface like that of our spinning ball globe? And here's an artist's view of the New Jerusalem coming down from heaven. <laughs> but just know when that time does come in heavenly Jerusalem descends to the center of our flat earth that is going to be just fine. <laughs> it's going to probably look um, a lot more amazing than this artistic rendition, but it will be in the central part of our realm. And so finally, I want to play a quick video, three minutes long, from May 2017, when I was describing this um, deception back then. This is before I connected a lot of dots that we're looking at at this point in time on my channel. But I do want to show seven years ago just how much deception that I think the world Christians were beginning to see. I think a lot of people were waking up to the spinning ball lie back then. Um, I've known this for 10 years ago. Like I said, I, I don't even think about it anymore. Um, you know, it was actually hard for me to like get back through the study because this is kind of old news. Um, but hopefully um, I did a little bit of justice here, but let's finish with this video. The magic top hat. The deception starts young. We're indoctrinated at a young age. The spinning ball lie. Dinosaurs, like we've talked about, it continues in elementary school. The system of the sun. Our teachers getting the globe out. Let's be like our famous heroes, the astronauts. And let's play with dinosaurs like Barney. When something's true and correct, it must be hammered in the brain of defenseless children. 
Let's make solar system models. Let's even put it above our children's cribs. They're tricksters. We live in a world of tricksters. Against powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world. They're here right now. They're in Satan's little season. We talked about evolution and that lie. All of this has been taught to us over generations. And since the advent of television and the communications with Hollywood movies, TV shows, we're further indoctrinated. We go to school and get indoctrinated, then we come home and we're indoctrinated by our TVs. It's time to wake from our slumber. And that's what this series is trying to do, is trying to wake people up from the slumber that this world's been in, in Satan's little season, in this era of deception. We don't live on a spinning ball. That's ridiculous. And there's so many verses. Trust your Bible. There's so many examples showing that it's false. Believe it. Trust the Holy Bible. Just like Joshua, where the sun stood still that we talked about and the moon stayed. This is a religion. This is a Luciferian religion that we are being indoctrinated in. Psalm 19.1, there's Werner, Werner von Braun's grave tomb. It's trying to hide God. But it's also trying to hide our past, it's trying to hide our present that we're in, and it's trying to hide what's coming. So trust your Bible. Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God bless.